that our readers have voted on their favorite travel destinations, and it's the third year in a row that Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, has been the number one island in the continental U.S. And we're here right now at the beautiful Sea Pines Resort, and I'm here with Bill, president of the Chamber of Commerce. And, you know, everyone really knows Hilton Head Island for its beautiful beaches and amazing golf courses, but there's so much more than that. So can you tell us a little bit about why you think you know, readers love Hilton Head so much? Absolutely. First of all, welcome to Hilton Head Island, and uh, we're delighted for the announcement of the Travel Savvy Readers for Travel and Leisure to name Hilton Head Island not once, but twice, then the third time as the uh, number one island in the continental U.S. So we're honored and humbled by your readership, and uh, uh, certainly appreciate that from everybody. Hilton Head Island is something, it really has something for everyone, and uh, uh, we're delighted to not only be have wonderful beaches, but we have a great culinary scene, the art scene. Uh, you can certainly, certainly go kayaking and canoeing, dolphin watching, really something for everybody. The, the, um, tremendous uh, uh, for all types of families, all different age, age groups to come and to be able to enjoy what you've been able to enjoy here for the last couple of days. Yeah, I've been having a great time so far exploring. And so we also have with us today some local experts who can talk more about everything there actually is to do in Hilton Head that you may not know. So now we'll move over here. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. And this is Mike Gordon from Outside Hilton Head, who can tell us about all the different activities that your company lets visitors to the island take part in. Thanks, and uh, I second Bill, and it's really an honor to be here and be part of this celebration. And being on Hilton Head for over 40 years, it's, it, I think it has been, and it certainly is a great island. The, um, you know, I think what really makes this place special, a lot of what we do is about what's behind us. You can see the water behind us and everything here in this part of the world really revolves around one word and that's tides. Mm -hmm. You know, our nature, our history, our culture, our literature, books like Prince of Tides, Forrest Gump and so forth, have very much been about the tides. For this building, you know, if somebody was going to put a home here probably because of the sea breeze, it's the tides, in our company, our mission is really to enrich lives by connecting people to the exceptional places and experiences that the tides bring. And you started out years ago just with windsurfing, is that correct? Correct. And now you're doing all sorts of different activities around the island. Yes, we've grown. We came here originally to start a windsurfing school, and the company's changed quite a bit in the last mm -hmm. 40 years. We now have a number of different divisions from destination management to team and leadership development, but on the recreation side, Again, just remarkable places to take a boat to mm -hmm. and experience or paddle or paddleboard or get on an electric bike or go. The fishing here is simply world class. Mm -hmm. uh, we have back islands such as the Fusky Island, a private chain of islands that our organization owns called Page Island that are just special gems of the East Coast to explore. Great. And are there certain times of year that are better for people who are interested in certain activities? You know what's special about this spot in our semi-tropical environment is every time of year has its bonuses. Mm -hmm. Summer, we just got over probably the busiest week of the year with 4th of July. You can see behind us all the people enjoying the beach for the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. We come into the fall and we're in harvest season. We're harvesting the bounty of the sea from our shellfish and crab. and. We have the last working oyster factory in the southeastern United States right down the street. Um, and it really makes the fall special. The holiday season, I don't know of a better destination to spend Thanksgiving or Christmas than the low country. And even when you get into the winter months, if uh, somebody's in a colder environment, come see us. And then everything explodes with the spring and highlighted with the best golf tournament on the PGA Tournament Tour. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the most popular activity? You know, I would say uh, sitting on a porch having a cocktail probably <laughs> is one of the most popular activities in the low country. We would love it if everybody would get in a kayak or get in a boat or grab a fishing mm -hmm. pole or have a day on Page Island. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really simply enjoying the tides and the, the, you know, there's nowhere that I've ever been in my life, I've done a lot of traveling, where this kind of man meets sea dynamic is more prevalent. And it really makes, we have a, a very discretionary 
uh, a traveler with our company, they, a lot of them have discretion to go a lot of places, and they've been there and done that, and they come here and they're like, wow, this is simply over the top. Yeah, I've really noticed when you go in and there are no billboards or street lights, it's very natural, nothing can be built above the trees, you've done a great job here of really preserving the nature. Yeah, the, the modern development, our forefathers, uh, folks like the inspiration of Sea Pines, Charles Frazier, really set some uh, set the standards and the islands followed it well. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And now, if you only had time for one thing, I'm only here for one more day, what's the one activity that I must do here? Uh, if you want to be active, it's the summertime, come out and go water skiing with us. Mm -hmm. Or I would get on an outback tour where we take you on a boat ride through the middle of Hilton Head. Mm -hmm. We'll stop for dolphins. We head around into the area that's locally known as the Outback, totally away from development. Our destination is a remote private chain of islands, Page Island. Great. You'll get there. We'll take you on a kayak up a beautiful calm water creek. Adventures. We have Rex here from the Coastal Discovery Museum, which I got to visit yesterday. It was so exciting. We saw some baby turtles and butterflies, horseshoe crabs. Can you tell everyone a little bit about why the Coastal Discovery Museum is a great place to kind of start out your trip to Hilton Head? Yeah, the Coastal Discovery Museum is a great place to start out because we try and connect people to a lot of the resources on the island. Um, historic sites, tours on the water, dolphin tours, but you also learn about the island, the land, the sea, the plants and animals, and so it's a great way to sort of understand what's here. Definitely. And um, I know we were talking a lot yesterday about sea turtles. I got to go out this morning with the Sea Turtle Patrol, which is such an amazing volunteer group, and check on all the different nests, and we actually found a new nest this morning. Um, what are some ways that visitors, you know, it's sea turtle season right now, can you talk a little bit about that and how visitors can get involved? Yes, like a lot of our visitors, the sea turtles like to come here during the summer. So this is prime sea turtle season, they're nesting on the beaches, um, Hilton Head has great beaches for tourists, but we share them with the sea turtles that have come here for hundreds of thousands of years to nest on our beaches. And so one of the important things is turning lights out at night. It disorients the sea turtles on the beach. So lights out, no flashlights unless they have red filters. And one of the things that the Coastal Discovery Museum does is we want to inspire people to care for the low country, not just learn about it. So if you're walking on the beach and you see trash, pick it up. That's really dangerous for the turtles. A lot of restaurants on the island have gone to no plastic straws. We try and encourage everyone uh, not to use single-use plastics if they can avoid it. And so some things like that to really be conservation-minded with the turtles. And of course we have the adopt a -Nest program, which is a great program that educates people about the turtles while helping to protect them. Great, and how many eggs are in each of these nests? On Hilton Head Island, we get about 120 eggs in an, in an average nest. So the nest, you're now going to be the mother of 120 baby turtles <laughs> since you adopted a nest. I'm adopting a nest of sea turtles <laughs> while I'm here. Um, and, uh, you know, it takes a couple months for them to hatch. The Sea Turtle Patrol actually does a lot of work. Um, you know, you found a nest, but sometimes mm -hmm. the nests are laid below the high tide line, mm -hmm. the spring high tide line, and they have to move those eggs within 24 hours so that they'll survive and move them to a higher location. So they do that. Yeah, and I then, think the nest yeah. that we found was just out far enough, otherwise we were going to have to move it. She yeah. said um, there was one day where they had to move about 10 nests in one day, and it takes, she said, about 45 minutes, I think, to move each nest. Yeah, those are long days yeah. for them. <laughs> <laughs> 12 hour days sometimes. I and think. you know, then the other thing people can do is fill in their holes, their sand castles. It's great fun to come to Hilton Head Island and play on the beach. Mm -hmm. The only thing we ask is at the end of the day, fill in the holes, knock down the sea castles, because those interrupt both the baby sea turtles and the mothers that are nesting. Mm -hmm. And there are several volunteer groups on the island that also go across the beaches at night and help fill those in. That's great. And you have a little bit of a demonstration for us. Well, yeah, I have a, um, a loggerhead sea turtle shell to give you an idea of the size of a, a fairly small loggerhead sea turtle. And one of the amazing things um, about them are actually their skulls, the logger head, because they have such a large head. Um, they use these very powerful jaws. They're the, the second most powerful um, turtle jaws after the alligator snapping turtle. 
and the most powerful sea turtle jaws. They'll crush whelks and conchs and these big mollusks. Um, with this, they also eat um, horseshoe crabs. And one of the reasons they're important is they also eat jellyfish. So the more sea turtles you have, the less jellyfish you have <laughs> swimming around um, on our beaches. Right. How old would a turtle be of this size, approximately? Well, um, you know, it's it's probably um, you know thirty. It could be thirty or forty years mm -hmm. old. And one of the things with these sea turtle nests is it, there might be a thousand eggs that are laid and only one of them lives to be an adult and come back um, to, to lay eggs on the beach again. So they face a lot of hazards, natural hazards, and we want to avoid them having any human hazards added yeah. on to that. Yeah. And so people on the beach during this time, I notice, will see the nests that are kind of marked off. Um, what should they do, basically, if they see one of those? Can they kind of take a look, but just stay back? Yeah, so, so all of the sea turtles are regulated by the South Carolina DNR, mm -hmm. and they manage all of these projects, and they really want what's best for the turtles, which is for us to stay away from them. Yeah. So the nests are marked with poles, and, and, and you can see them from afar, but there's really no reason. You mm -hmm. won't see anything special right. there. Enjoy the beach, enjoy your friends, um, adopt a nest, mm -hmm. but don't don't try and see a nest hatching. Right. And it's against the law to interfere with any of the nesting mm -hmm. or with adult or baby sea turtles. And a lot of people don't know that. So right. it's just sort of spreading the word that touching them, handling them, shining lights on them, or messing with the nests are bad. Um, picking up litter is good. If you want to be closer to the sea turtles, pick up some trash off the beach. <laughs> <laughs> And what does someone have to do if they want to adopt a nest? Um, they can go to the Coastal Discovery Museum's website, so coastaldiscovery.org, and under support, there's a whole sea turtle section, and it has some of the other things you can do to okay. protect sea turtles, but it also has the nest adoption, and when you adopt a nest, you learn all about the sea turtles. There's off-season and on-season stuff that's happening with them, the genetics, who the mother turtles are, so that's been studied. And then you can sort of track your nest, and when it hatches, you find out how many sea turtles, how many baby turtles were in it. Great. And it's all run by a volunteer, Andrea, who's great and sends personal emails to everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great way to learn about sea turtles or to share that excitement with kids or grandchildren. Great. And what is the sea turtle season down here? When does it start and when does it end? It, it's really the same as the peak tourist season. It starts in April and goes through September. There's a lot of nests laid early in the season, and there's a lot of nests hatching late in the season. In the middle part of the season, in the summer, they overlap. Okay. And what are some other wildlife that, examples of wildlife that people might see here? Well, you know, what we, what we try and teach people at the museum is how to be responsible around the wildlife here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Hilton Head Island has a lot of alligators. And we have a low country critters where you can hold baby alligators. But we teach people in the wild not to interact with them, mm -hmm. not to feed them. A lot of these things endanger the animals. Um, and um, it's just best for people to come experience those creatures at the museum mm -hmm. and maybe not in the wild. Give them okay. some respect and distance in the wild. Okay, great. And is my t-shirt over there? Yes, yeah, so your t-shirt so is over here. It's <laughs> so here. it's part of the nest adoption. Um, you can choose a t-shirt. Here's your t-shirt. Yeah. And you also get a certificate. So I'll get a certificate and a t-shirt to think about my baby turtles. <laughs> Great. And um, I believe I didn't tell everyone, but if you have asked some questions or if you have any questions about things to do in Hilton Head Island, um, feel free to drop them in the comments and we'll be answering some. Oh, so, um, oh, yeah. you know, one of the questions people ask, you asked how many, um, the size yeah. of the eggs. And actually for the loggerhead sea turtle, if you can see here, they're about the size of a ping pong ball. So we mm -hmm. actually have a demonstration nest that we show people that's made out of all ping pong balls because they look just like sea turtle eggs. And there's a range of other sea turtles. The, the ones that nest most frequently on Hilton Head Island's beaches um, are the loggerhead sea turtles like this one. But very rarely we'll get leatherbacks, which are the largest sea turtle, and they're absolutely huge. And then we get some of the smaller um, uh, hawksbill and green turtles. Um, what was the on, turtle on that? Offshore. What were the tiny turtles that we saw at the museum yesterday? So the turtles you saw at the museum yesterday are diamondback terrapins, mm -hmm. and they actually live in the salt marshes. Okay. 
and so they're not sea turtles and a lot of people confuse mm -hmm. other turtles with sea turtles so right. someone will call up and say there's a sea turtle laying a nest in my yard turtles and it was funny yesterday um, after you left I was going home from work around five o'clock and I saw a pond turtle crossing 278 and I pulled over and got out of my car and uh, brought it to the other side and let it go um, and that's I think what most people on Hilton Head Island are interested in doing helping these animals protecting them and there are a lot of turtles other than sea turtles and those are some of the ones you can see at the museum, we have an adult diamondback terrapin and some babies. Mm -hmm. We have a baby alligator. We have a marine touch tank. We saw some of the food sources for yeah. turtles there, mm -hmm. um, the conchs and the whelks. And um, it's a great place to sort of learn about the creatures that you will see here on the beach. And I might mention it's also air conditioned. If you've noticed <laughs> how much I'm sweating out here on the beach. Most frequent visitors come on Wednesdays because they've come to the beach, they've gotten a little sunburned, they come to the museum, we have a critters program then, mm -hmm. and they enjoy our air conditioned indoors. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a lab for kids as well, where they can sort of get up close and personal with them. Yeah, we have a discovery lab, mm -hmm. the Tom People's Discovery Lab, and uh, it's open um, for uh, limited times, but six days a week we have some program in there. We have one on reptiles and amphibians, one just on sea turtles, which is a great program. Under the Sea, which is about all the sea creatures. Um, and we actually have one on Saturdays for locals that we try and encourage locals to come to the museum and learn more about the place they call home. Great. So we have a few questions here. Let's see. Okay, maybe this one's for you. Mike. Um, what's the best way to get to Hilton Head Island? Because it depends on where you're coming <laughs> from, but In terms you know, of which airport? what's nice now is Hilton Head has a wonderful airport newly lengthened runway, American flies, a brand new jet out of Charlotte and Savannah, uh, I think just made your top seven best airports in the world. Yeah. And just a remarkable airport to land in. It's modeled after a city square of Savannah. It's easy, you come in, you go, you don't have to get there that far ahead of your flight. And non-stops, I think, from almost every city, at least east of the Mississippi, yeah. into Savannah. I know I flew into Savannah from Newark, and it was super easy. Yeah, I think. So that's really easy too, and super close too. If you're already in Savannah, if you're in Charleston, it's what about a two and a half about hour two hour drive, drive from Charleston, drive. but it's easy. You know, however you get here, on the train, or obviously a lot of families in the summer coming with. Cars, cars full of toys. So, uh -huh. yeah, and the drive from Charleston is beautiful because you go Charleston. over all the salt marshes yeah. and bridges, mm -hmm. and you get to see the Low Country, right. and that's sort of a phenomenal experience for people that haven't seen it before. Right. And someone wants to know about the things that they must do in Hilton Head Island, and they actually also mentioned biking. Um, I know that's a huge activity here, correct? So biking, um, we the islands received numerous awards for its bike trail system. Just I don't know what the total number is, but it's like just hundreds of miles of bike trails of the island that are just beautiful and wide. And it is the low country, which means we don't have elevation. <laughs> so it's nice flat bike riding, and we have a 15 mile long beach, which is a hard packed beach, which is also a wonderful place to ride a bike on. Our city is the water. Mm -hmm. So, if, however, whether you're in a, a paddling vessel, a kayak, a paddleboard, a powerboat, or whatever, get out in the water. <laughs> Great. I would agree with that. Yeah. Getting out in the water is really mm -hmm. what makes this place really so incredible. Yeah, I know I've seen here at Sea Pines, which is also a huge property, everyone just biking around and I think heading for the beach, which of course makes sense. Um, what is a must-try seafood? You know, uh, we have, we are an island and we have big tides. One nice thing the tides do for us is our entire area, we have somewhere between eight and 12 foot tides every six hours. Mm -hmm. So our whole area is getting flushed. Plus a remarkable salt marsh ecosystem combined with a remarkable population of oysters, which are filter feeders, all that adds up to some of the cleanest, most healthiest salt water in the world. Just beautiful. And the shellfish here is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Our shrimp is as good as anywhere in the world. I've never tasted a better oyster. 
uh, we have fantastic Atlantic blue crab, and then all of our local fish are great. Great. Did you want to add anything to that? I, I would second seafood? that. You know, we like my favorite seafoods are the shellfish. And we have a blue crab discovery program at the museum where kids get to pull up a trap. We learn about the salt marsh, the blue crabs, and then we cook them and they get to eat the blue crabs. <laughs> um, and so that's a great experience for them. And then, yeah, the oysters and the locally caught shrimp. The mm -hmm. locally caught shrimp are nothing like what you buy in the grocery store. And that's something to experience here. Several good restaurants, local restaurants have them. And, and for people that like shrimp, they will... offshore with our big bubblegum shrimp boats um, most of the year, but our our recreational shrimping season is in the fall. It runs from about mid-August to uh, about the end of October, and Outside does a program where we'll take folks out in small skiffs and catch shrimp in a very traditional fashion with a cast net, the same way folks have been doing it for generations. Teach them how to throw a cast net, hopefully catch a bunch of shrimp, you can come back and you have your, your dinner in the cooler. Nothing fresher than that. We'll be back later actually tonight for the sunset, also talking about the seafood culinary scene here and having some sunset cocktails. So thank you everyone and thank you for joining us. Thank you so and much. And we'll see you later.